Hi, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm. Microsoft released its Surface tablet, not that big table with the multi-touch. No, I like that thing. That thing's really cool. You can play chess yeah. and stuff on it. But now it's actually their 10-inch uh, tablet that also runs Windows 8. Happy Windows 8 Day last week. That was on Octobercast. I don't even remember that anymore. Yeah. Um, so this is the Surface RT. It's the ARM-based tablet. It's running a Tigra 3 processor. It has 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage. Two um, gigs of RAM. Two gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. And basically- A couple it, of cameras. Yeah, a couple of cameras. Uh, everything you'd expect um, from a normal uh, high-end tablet, right? For yeah. example, like the iPad, because it is priced very comparably to the iPad, which you can- 32 gig version yes. starts at 500 bucks, right? 500 bucks for the Surface, and add 100 bucks for a 64 gig version. Mm -hmm. Also, you can add 100 bucks if you want to bundle the smart cover. So on paper, a 32 gig Surface RT is $100 cheaper than a 32 gig iPad fourth generation. Just came out today. Sure. Uh, but Microsoft is not billing this as just your typical tablet, because it runs oh. Windows, even though it is the ARM version of Windows. Let's continue yeah. talking a little bit more about the hardware. Yeah. So, a couple uh, of things that are unique about it. It's a USB host. So you can plug in thumb drives and keyboards and mice and cameras and stuff like that. Right there, there's a USB port right so, there. So as you mentioned earlier, this has a T NVIDIA Tigra 3 inside. We've seen the Tigra 3 in devices like tablets, like the Nexus 7. Android Same stuff, processor, uh, 1.3 gigahertz in here. And because there's a Tigra 3, it has, like you said, a USB 2.0 host. What can you do with the USB 2.0? Thumb drives, cameras, some printers, uh, it's all stuff that I never use in the real real world. Keyboard and mice. Keyboard and mouse. That's something, of course, the iPad doesn't have. You can, like you said, host drive. Well, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard with the iPad. It works fine. Right. But not a USB keyboard. No mouse. No, no keyboards. No printers. Yeah. It's all over Wi-Fi well, for you, the iPad. Yeah, if you want to print with wi with an iPad, you have to have an iPad-supported printer. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a relatively small number of those, and they're mostly kind of crappy home printers. And you, if you plug in the USB key in here and you have photos or music... It'll import directly. I find that that's not the way I import stuff onto tablets these days. I've gotten used to pulling, putting things up in the cloud and then pulling them down. But that is a perfectly viable way to load content onto this sure. device. Which is actually much more convenient than, say, syncing with an iPad or something like right. that. And Android devices, to be fair, have USB hosts that you can yes, also you do can the do, same thing. This is nothing new for Android. Yeah. Uh, next to the USB uh, port, you have the micro, micro HDMI. HDMI. Yeah. Now you have to buy a separate cable that will connect this either to full-size HDMI or VGA. Or you can go to Monoprice and get a HDMI to micro HDMI cable that's the yes. length that you want. It costs five or ten bucks. Again, this is another benefit of it running the Tigra 3. It's built in, does the video doubling Seems out. more like a real computer. It has video out, it has mm -hmm. input in, uh, there's an expandable slot. Yes. Uh, well, first off, let's talk about the kickstand. Um, originally made popular by Sprint's Evo 4G. Kind of useful. Yeah, okay. and this kickstand, it's made of the same magnesium alloy that Microsoft has proprietized. Mm -hmm. uh, flush with the back, so it doesn't actually stick out. You actually clip your finger trying to open the kickstand. I just cut it right then. Yeah, on the right side, ago. because it only has one notch on the left side here for you to actually open it. And Microsoft has made a big deal of all things, the sound of the kickstand. I, I never noticed that it had a sound. I'm going to put it close to my mic. Let's see. It sounds like two perfectly flat surfaces hitting each other. That's one example they give to really show off what they call the fit and finish of this, this product. So the thing I'll say is it is a very well-constructed device. The hardware is great. It's, it feels sturdy. It feels like you can chuck it in your bag. You're not going to worry about it getting dinged up or scratched or anything. I have been just chucking it into my bag all week. Yeah. No problems. Yes. Glass in the front. Um, Magnesium uh, on the back, yep. vapor mag. I don't, it's, it's all that's BS it's, it's marketing. The same kind of BS as chamfers and reveals. Mm -hmm. It's just a material, and it's a relatively sturdy seeming material. I haven't tried actually scratching it, but it seems pretty sturdy. And we've seen people that have really pushed down on the kickstand. It's a sturdy hinge as well, which is sure. important because you're going to use this for a long time. You said you threw it in the bag, and this whole thing right now with the 10.6 inch screen. We'll mm -hmm. get to that in a second. Uh, weighs 1.5 pounds. Yeah, so it's heavier than an iPad, uh, even the third generation one. It's lighter than pretty much every laptop I've ever had. So, so a lot of people have said it is. It feels heavy yeah. if you think of this in the sense of a, a tablet. Um, because it is a 16 by 9 screen, uh, when I first held onto it, I gripped it with two hands mm -hmm. on the side, and it didn't feel, in my mind, I'm thinking laptop. So for a laptop, for it's a- It's super light. It's super light. For a tablet, if you want to hold it with one hand, first of all, not great to hold in this so, portrait mode. So yeah, there's a couple of things going on here. It's I always use it two-handed. Yeah. It's always either two-handed or like one hand resting on my lap. Uh, it's never just 
one hand, it just doesn't work. You can't hold it that way. No. You, you actually are gonna hurt your wrist if you hold it that way for mm -hmm. an extended period of time. The other thing is, like you said, in portrait mode is unwieldy. There's no good place to grip. The bezel's not quite thick enough. You can't cup it. You can't hold it on the bottom because it gets real top heavy. It's not comfortable to hold in portrait. Yeah. Very clearly is a landscape device. Let's talk about expandability because it does have oh, one yes. thing that you don't have on typical tablets. It has an XD card, a micro SD card slot. So on the bottom, I flipped open this uh, the kickstand, and you can see this version is a 64 gig version. Yeah. Um, but over here, in this tiny corner, there's no cover for it. There actually is a it micro SD out. slot, and you can store not applications, but you can store media. So this yeah. is for photos, music, and videos. So you can have 120 gigs of media on here, which is a ton, because you're talking about 720p video. I, I mean, it doesn't. It's two gigs of video, one and a half gigs of video from the store. It adds up really quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I think actually it's higher than that for the Microsoft Store. You want that? You may or may not want the extra space. It's nice to have the option. 64 gig cards are relatively cheap. Um, and you can put a 32 gig uh, micro SD card in now. They're like $18 if you buy them on Amazon. Yeah. So they're so they're essentially free. Between the USB 2.0 port and that micro SD card right. and the built-in storage starting at 32 gigs, a lot of room for expandability. In that regard, it feels much more like a real computer. Mm -hmm. That continues when you sit down in front of it. You put the kickstand out. Um, and you sit on your desk, and it kind of feels like a real computer. You, you have a little trackpad on the on the keyboard device. Mm -hmm. You can sit down. You can kind of type. It's it seems okay. Like I get the idea now. It seems like a good idea. The screen's big. It's like a normal thin and light laptop size screen. It's thirteen sixty eight. Thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight, which you. is the minimum requirements that Microsoft requires for having a, uh, a two third to one third uh, mini app. You actually cannot run that while you are on the start screen. Oh, right. You have to be in, a, in an app. Um, and it is a 16 by 9 screen. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's not retina, not enough pixels per inch. I think it's a fine screen for reading. So humorously, Microsoft in the AMA leading up to this product had an extended conversation full of all sorts of marketing lingo. It didn't make any sense about why subpixel anti-aliasing actually makes the screen seem bigger than it is. Uh, I, I still think that the answer should have just been, hey, subpixel anti-aliasing is pretty good. That's the takeaway I have here. When you load something up like the Kindle app, it, it works pretty well. Like you, it's not, you can still see pixels if you look and you go in looking for pixels, but it is definitely not uncomfortable. It's better than, say, the iPad mini screen, mm -hmm. um, even though the pixel density is probably a little bit lower. And like with you know uh, the new iPhone 5, the screen, the actual LCD, mm -hmm. is uh, bonded to the, the glass yeah. in a way that there isn't a thin layer of air. Feels much closer to the surface, more like you're touching a piece of paper or a glossy magazine than, it, than, than you're using an LCD that's sunk down into the screen. So all of these things add up to a quote unquote fit and finish of the hardware design. The hardware is really nice. We like. We really like yeah. the hardware. Um, a couple of things we did notice. The keyboards are a little spotty. There are two types of keyboards. There's one that's a pure touch-based keyboard. They call it the touch keyboard. Touch cover. Touch cover. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason these are called covers is that they snap on with magnets to the bottom of the screen, and then you fold up. Now, is there a magnet the, on the top? There's no magnet there. It, does, it flaps open. People complained about that. I think that's a little bit crazy. Using it, carrying it around, you always are either holding it like that or like this. Right. There's no worries that it's going to flap around. Like sure. that's it's a ridiculous complaint. The magnets are kind of superfluous. And these these touch covers, uh, they don't fold. They don't triangulate and fold because they don't they don't turn into a kickstand. No. Like the smart covers do on the iPad. Exactly. Because there's already a kickstand built well, in. Well, and the kickstand gives you a much better angle for using on a desk than the smart cover does on the iPad. So these are pretty rigid. Um, sure. Yeah. It's it's a it's like a hard piece of plastic with some kind of soft modern material over the top of it. I actually like this keyboard better than the other one. Which is surprising, because um, when Microsoft first announced the two types of covers, they announced the touch should, cover. Yeah, and, and then the type cover. A type cover, which actually has physical keys. It has scissor keys with a membrane underneath it, just like a normal laptop keyboard. Um, the, the difference is the touch cover is a little tiny bit thinner. It's 10 bucks cheaper. This is 120 bucks versus 130 bucks. I found that this didn't work very well on my lap. So this is not a device, the, the touch cover works okay on your lap. You prop the kickstand out, you fold out the cover, and you can type away almost like you would be using a real mm -hmm. computer. Uh, this, this keyboard does not register hits on the lap. You have to hit much too hard. It's much less sensitive as a keyboard than most of the laptop keyboards I've used in the last several years. So you have to really hammer away at it. And if you're on, the, if you're on a hard surface, you don't notice it so much. Like a desk. Yeah, if it's on a table or a desk, then you can type as fast as you want, and I can go 90, 100 words a minute, and it's no problem. Uh, if you're on your lap, you don't get enough resistance from the lap, and, and the button presses don't hit. Both so, of these covers 
um, also have a touchpad yeah. and, and mouse buttons. So this one is a touch touchpad as well. This one is actually uh, like it, it's a different different type of surface here. This touchpad is much better than this one. Huh. Um, th neither of them are particularly good. They're both too small. Uh, they're both difficult to use. The scroll speed when you're in, say, an app or a browser or something like that, with the with this with this two finger touch on the on the touchpad on the type cover or the touch cover is slow. It's like the frame rate is hitchy. So I found myself using the, my finger, which performed much better. So if you had to get just one of the covers, which one would you recommend? I think I'd probably go for the 64 gig model, which comes with a black touch cover, this kind. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would probably skip the type cover, unless you really, really, really think that you need those scissor keys and you're going to be using it on a table all the time. And a, a minor note, uh, the bundled touch covers and type covers have this kind of feathered background. Uh, it's soft. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's you kind of want to just rub it up against yeah. your face. I'll do that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this Greasy. one is the same materials on the front, on mm -hmm. the colored uh, type covers. All right, touch so covers, rather. touch cover, decent, yeah, usable. Uh, also, it turns on and off. There's, a, there's something in here that triggers it to turn on and off when it's closed. So Very cool. Kind of neat. And that really talks, you know, goes to, the, again, the fit and finish. Microsoft clearly put some, design, some thought. They, they've been working on this. This is a device designed to showcase Windows RT. I think in that regard, they've made something that actually is better than the software platform. There's a couple other things that are unique about this in the tablet space. There's multiple user accounts. Yeah. So uh, I'm signed in right now. I'm going to sign out. I can switch over to you. You'll have to type in your password. It's mm -hmm. a little slow, I think, um, but it, it works reasonably well. Multiple user accounts are unique for tablets. It's not something we've seen on anything else, Android or iOS in something the past. I kind of really want on something like an Android tablet it, or an iPad. It makes sense on a high dollar item that you can have an account for you. You hand it off to your kids. They have an account. Your wife has an account. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like there's not 12 Gmail accounts in your mail app. And it's or, something that, you know, for me when I have a PC at home running Windows 7, yeah. I never use I never use the guest account. But, but you know what? Here it makes sense. You're a single dude who lives at home yeah. essentially by yourself. Nobody else uses your computer. Mm -hmm. My wife uses my computer all the time. She switches to her own account. I don't want her cluttering up my stuff with her. Right. With her Creating business. a user account, really simple. Uh, it will import all your stuff from SkyDrive. If you mm -hmm. set up Windows 8 on a desktop, I have all your preferences, your, your user icon, your background, and stuff built in your contacts. Yeah, and if you it. choose to take pictures with this, I wouldn't recommend doing that because the cameras are both about one megapixel. They're clearly for video conferencing, not for photography. It'll upload those pictures to yeah. SkyDrive, so you can marvel at how bad they look on yeah. your computer. I'm actually, I'm almost glad this has a terrible camera on the back because it clearly made for video conferencing, good enough 720p for video conferencing, it kind of punishes you if you use this as a real camera. Well, and it's really hard. Like, the holding it, I think somebody at Microsoft really hates those people holding up iPads at com com conferences concerts. and concerts and stuff because the angle on that top camera is such, you have to, in order to get something that's ahead of you and down, you have to tilt it so far uh, forward, uh, you can't see the screen. Yeah. It's perfect. I it's like that. Good. I think that's, I mean, the cameras aren't good. No. They're for video conferencing. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. Battery life, Norm. Okay, so as a tablet, one of the goals of Windows RT is, mm -hmm. and Windows 8 in general is to have longer battery life on mobile devices. It's definitely longer. I wasn't able to use this long enough to run the battery down. Hmm. I, I didn't sit down and watch like six hours of video or anything like that, but I found that I was frustrated with the experience by the end of a two hour session and just walked away. Uh, they char don't show I charged it twice, three times in the week that I've had it. So every other day, using a couple hours a day for email and web browsing, stuff like that, seems to be more than enough. Now Microsoft actually does not show the percentage of battery. There is like a little indicator yeah. here. They really don't want you to think about battery. And you know what? Part of the reason also is because charging it is a little bit of a hassle. Yeah, so this is an important thing to mention. The power brick, you look at it and I thought, oh, this is a thing, it looks kind of like a MagSafe connector. This is going to be really easy. It's got it's clearly got some magnets in here, uh, four pins. It looks like it's going to be really easy. You'll just get it kind of close and it's going to kind of pop in. And you have to get it lined up just exactly right. There's a definite knack to it. It's the kind of thing that if you're fiddling with it late at night, like getting ready to go to bed, you want to charge up your, your surface, it doesn't, it's hard to get on right. And one way is definitely better than the other. Cable up does not work very well at all. Hmm. Um, it's very fiddly. It's not. If, for a device that is pretty well designed otherwise, this is a noticeable shortcoming. So speaking of shortcomings, the biggest shortcoming that we think of the Microsoft Surface, very unfortunately, is guess what? Windows 8 RT. Windows 8 RT is, um, like I said, it's, I sit down, I use this with the touch keyboard, the type keyboard, either one. You see the potential of a tablet laptop hybrid device. Like, I, I love the idea of having all of my work stuff all of my home stuff, one device I can use in the living room while watching TV, I can take it to the office and use it for work. It doesn't work very well in practice. 
Um, Windows RT is pretty janky, frankly, right now. Yeah. Uh, things, things just stop working for no apparent reason, like wireless. Yeah, so there's the MIMO wireless, the dual band mm -hmm. wireless in here. We've had wireless drops consistently with the Surface. So and while it, browsing the web, using Internet Explorer, signal just drop. And, and multiple other devices connected to the same network that are still connected fine. It's just the wireless bombing out. There's been a bunch of other things too. Internet Explorer Metro is very crashy. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, a half dozen crashes in the week that I've been using this, which is more than I've had on another browser on any platform in a very long time. Uh, things like the touch and type keyboards inconsistently work in different uh, UI modes. So sometimes you'll go to put your password in to log into the Surface, and, and it just doesn't work. The touch keyboard or type keyboard just doesn't work. Uh, sometimes it'll stop recognizing in certain apps, but then it'll work in others, and it's really confusing. The only way I was able to fix that stuff was by rebooting the computer, which should be unnecessary at this point. So well, it's 2012. So if you watch our coverage of Windows 8, one of the big problems we have is this dichotomy between the start screen and the traditional desktop. Yeah. And that seems to be accentuated here on the Surface RT. Well, in some ways, it's not. Like As long as you stay in the modern, what they used to call Metro interface, it's quite good. Like you, The experience is pretty good. Sure, stuff crashes occasionally, wireless drops some. But the performance is good, and, and it makes sense. It speaks the same design language. When you say performance, you mean user interface I mean, performance. UI performance is yeah. good. Like, like scrolling back and forth. Uh, there are some other, other performance problems. Launching apps that haven't been opened recently, very, very slow. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be something that is time-based. If you don't use an app in 10 or 15 minutes, it, it falls back out of memory and then takes three to five seconds, maybe longer to launch mm -hmm. on iPad, Android tablets, that's usually instantaneous. Uh, then there's a further time while it connects to the network. It's not like it's that time is used to, to grab Twitter information or something from the network. It just takes forever to launch. This is gonna go to a login screen, and it's taking this long to launch. I don't understand. Now if you go back to that video app, it'll pop right up, because it'll be cached. Um, it doesn't seem to be based on the most recent apps used. It, it seems to be purely time-based. If you wait 20 or 30 minutes, they fall out. So that means every time, if you launch Twitter once an hour, it takes 10 seconds each time. So as I was getting to you before, uh, the start screen, yeah. responsive, it's okay. and then there's a desktop. Yeah. So in the desktop, what can you do? The desktop is still there for legacy purposes. There's Office apps installed that are fine. They're not full-featured Office apps. Uh, I find that the desktop interface it's hard to hit touch. The touch targets are a little bit hard to find. If you go to a site like Reddit, for example, where there's a lot of links that are vertically uh, kind of compressed on the page, it's really hard to actually hit the right link. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty significant problem. Uh, also, keyboard entry on the desktop is unwieldy. So if you click in here, you should bring up the keyboard app so you can type. It doesn't come up until you actually hit the keyboard button on the screen. And then you have to hit two more taps to make that go away. So even when you press enter, that keyboard is going to stay open. And this is a problem with the, with the landscape orientation of the tablet. The keyboard takes up more than half of the vertical resolution of the screen. Vertical resolution is really important. It means that your viewing window for websites, whatever you're using, whether it's a modern Metro app or on the traditional desktop, you're wasting a crazy amount of space on keyboard. Yeah. Which, which is unfortunate. Now, on the desktop, you do traditional things like file management. So you have yeah. Windows Explorer. There's a recycle bin, woohoo, a background. But there are, like you said, control panel. Control panel. So settings, just like on Windows 8 for desktop, settings are split between the settings modern app and the, control, the traditional control panel. You can get to both of them relatively easy from the settings tab on the charms on the side of the screen. It's not, that's not a significant challenge. But then some settings, like the timeout, the user timeout for how long the screen stays on uh, when it's not being used, are only accessible in the old control panel. And there's really no rhyme or reason as to why that is. You just have to kind of look for it in one place. If it's not there, you go look for it in the other place. So how is an Office that comes bundled with? Uh... It's fine. I mean, I, honestly, at this point, it all connects to Office Live. It's, it's, it's. But you, you, know, know, you, can, you can use Office without being connected to the internet. You can use Office without being connected to the internet. Uh, I wasn't able to tell exactly. I mean, I, I know that they're native versions of the browsers. They, it could have just been uh, web versions. Who knows? It, it's not stuff I'm going to use, most likely, just really? because the desktop interface is bad for doing work. Because hmm. that's what I would want to use this for. I would want to plug in the touch keyboard or a USB keyboard, pop up Office RT, and, I'm, and start typing. In fairness, I'm not a power Office user. I mean, I'm perfectly happy with Google Docs or a text editor. So, you know, if you live and die by Excel, this is awesome. 
you're going to probably go nuts for this. And it's not for me. Like, like in the Edition Office, there is also Internet Explorer. Yeah. And Internet Explorer, which is different from the Metro version of Internet Explorer, actually supports touch gestures and, and, and multi-touch. It, it, it does. Again, the, hitting the touch targets I found to be a little challenging. Well, I'm saying like just pinching but and zooming. But pinching and zooming works. All the touch, touch interface stuff from Windows 7 works. It's better. It's still not great. Um, the, the Metro version and the desktop version of IE are better integrated now, so you can do things like send a browser page from the Metro version to the desktop version. Um, if you go down to this little this little window guy in the lower right corner, and there it goes view yeah, on desktop, and it goes on desktop. Yeah, so like that stuff works a little bit better. It still doesn't seem to like it's still weird to have two browsers that are the same browser, but they're not the same browser. I, I don't get that. Let's talk about apps. Sure, because apps are. Like the thing about apps on tablets is that they give you a way to bypass the fact that the browser is not that hot, right? You get the things that uh, that leverage the power of a tablet that it's always on and that there's background notifications happening, and you kind of like they, they're vibrant. They're it's very bleak on the Windows Store right now. Yeah, like the Windows Phone Store has gotten to a point where it's pretty good. You know, they have 46 of 50 top apps. They're really proud of that. It's a good thing for people who have Windows phones. Uh, this is a, a grim, grim situation. They have a couple of things. They have Kindle. They have a Kindle app. They have Netflix. Um, they have a Kindle app. Uh, there's Netflix. Um, Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Angry Birds is there. Okay. Jetpack Joyride. There's, they actually did pretty well on games. I'm being a little bit glib. The games are pretty good uh, from a hey, we got to have the Angry Birds on our new platform standpoint. I don't know about you, I've played all the Angry Birds I ever need to play at this point, probably. Um, the rest of the stuff is really thin. There's no streaming music services other than the Xbox Live one. There's no Pandora, there's no Spotify, there's no RDO. Um, the Amazon stuff is thin aside from the Kindle app. Yeah, good luck um, finding your banking app. There's no Facebook app, Norm. And Microsoft owns a piece of Facebook. There's, no, there's a great Facebook app on Windows Phone. It's tightly integrated with the OS. You still have integration with the People app on Windows 8 in, with Facebook, but there's no way to actually use Facebook. It's just you get the information from there, and you can kind of post status updates and things like that, but, but you can't just load up Facebook and see what your friends are doing. Yeah, do it on the, in the web browser. There's no first-party Twitter app. They're working on it. Hmm. Uh, the third-party Twitter apps are both really, really bad. I asked Twitter. I went out, I looked to see which ones, like what the Twitter app everybody was using, and they're all like, oh, this one's great, this one's great. No, no, they're not, they're both bad. Um, and, th and that kind of sums up the whole experience. If you wanna do something and it doesn't work well in the browser, you're completely boned, because you can't install x86 apps. Yeah, so uh, the millions, hundreds of thousands of traditional millions. Millions, millions and millions of applications. Of programs that you could normally install Windows 95, yeah. 98, yeah. ME even, yeah. XP, 2000, Seven? NT4, Vista, 7, 764. There's been 20 versions of Windows that run all these apps, no, no more. Not so that means RT. no TweetDeck, no um, Chrome, no third-party browsers, none of the tools that you're used to using on your Windows PC will work on this, which is really a, a, a shame because here's the thing. The hardware is quite good. The software needs work. I mean, the software very clearly needs more time. Stuff like the keyboards disconnecting, the Wi-Fi not working, this incredible amount of time it takes to load every single app on the system, all should be better. Um, as developers build apps for Windows 8 x86, they'll also start, I mean, they'll start just by nature, virtue of the way the, the ecosystem works here, they'll be working on this device in six months. So the situation may be completely different from six, six months from now, but as it is right now, like it is a web browser with Word and PowerPoint and Excel and a really bad like I think it's a bad mail client. The 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 Metro mail client that they ship with this is not it, it doesn't have unified mailboxes. Um, it, it's 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 cluttered and noisy and difficult to use. You lose things in drafts folders and stuff like that all the time. It's not really good at the core stuff that I think of as tablet. As things you use tablets for. Yeah, and even like photo viewing. You know, yes, there's integration with SkyDrive, with Facebook and Flickr. Yeah. But the actual photo viewing experience is not that app is at all. bad. Yeah. It's unwieldy. It's difficult to like select things and group them and share a bunch. Mm -hmm. You can do it, but they never really explain how to use the core UI changes in this modern design language. This is the fundamental problem with Windows 8, I think. The entire the entirety of here's how you use this brand new thing that you've never seen before is a video that pops up when you create a new user account that says, swipe in from the edges. Swipe in from the edges. 
And, and that's not enough because you have to know how to get context menus up. You have to know how to you know, share things with people. This whole, all the intense stuff that they built into Windows 8 is really neat. And when you have apps that take advantage of that, it'll be really cool. But if people can't figure that out, it it's, doesn't matter. So, I mean, that, that's, that's, the app situation is really, really bad. Yeah. And apps are really important for tablets. And we really, so because of all that, we really can't recommend buying the Microsoft Surface, any of the SKUs, uh, the RT version. I, I mean, I think, I think it's a wait and see on the Surface. If you're interested in buying a Surface, then stay interested in buying a Surface. Don't buy one right now. Give it six months, see where the apps are at. We'll keep talking about this, I'm sure. I, I, this is a Microsoft provided unit. Um, I, I, I'm interested in seeing how this evolves. It could be a very different product a year from now. But as it is today, it's, it's, not, it's not something I could recommend anyone should buy. All right, well, there so, you have it. Protested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.